Hello, my name is Sergeant Gonzalo Duran, and I'm the host of Vet Talk. I'm happy to be back on the air thanks to our sponsors, JM Empire Media and Vero G Production. If you are an organization dedicated to helping veterans, we'd like to have you on our show. Feel free to email me at CEO at DevilDogUSAINC.org or feel free to call me at 516-515-0240. If you'd like to see what else we're doing, check out our website at www.DevilDogUSAINC.org. As always, God bless America. Hello, everyone. This is Vet Talk, and I'm your host, Sergeant Gonzalo Duran. First, I'd like to say thank you to our producers, JM Empire Media and Vero G Productions, for hosting our six-year anniversary. Today's guest is the CEO and founder of Meet Me at the Crossroad, Diane Anderson. Diane, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. You know, my first question is, what is Meet Me at the Crossroads? Meet Me at the Crossroads is a faith-based evidence-based trauma-informed counseling program. And so what we do is we stand on the Word of God primarily, and we use evidence-based techniques to help veterans that have come back and have problems readjusting and acclimating back into civilian life. So we deal with things like PTSD, um, those that have experienced sexual abuse in the military also, things like that. And also we do advocacy and referrals for them that they need employment or they need medical services or housing. And your organization is a not-for-profit? Yes, it is. So now as a not-for-profit, um, is there any other organizations like maybe say the VA that you're working with or um, maybe the government agencies? Well, we don't receive funding from any organization. So we basically um, have to fend for ourselves in the areas of doing fundraisers. I also have um, clothing that we sell, and I have books. But I do volunteer at the VA hospital on Kingsbridge. And so that's a way that I collaborate. But as far as any, like, um, funding support, no. Okay, so primarily by donations and um, a sponsorship. That's right, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, just before anything, I, you know, just so that people know what you're doing and it's a hard work, mm -hmm. um, would you let them know how to contact you Absolutely. so that they can help out with the, with the charity part? Yes. So our um, website actually has a very easy donation button on our website at meetmeatthexroad.com, all lowercase. So when they go to that website, they can see exactly what we do. We have some photos of, you know, different events that we were at and also on pages at the end. They can order clothing through there, and they can order um, books. So the clothing basically says, meet me at the crossroads. And for the veteran shirts, it says, serving those who have served. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the once again, you, you went pretty broad with the work that you're doing, which is great. Yes. I love it. Um, the standing between the faith and the military and the counseling services. Yes. Um, how did you how do you put that all together? Because I mean, I'm sure that's a, a beautiful story right there. Um, it is a beautiful story. Um, I came from a background where all military. My father was a Navy man. My brothers, um, Navy, Marine Corps, hardcore devil dog. You Hurrah. know, <laughs> yes, you know. And my son is now in the Air Force in his third year. So this is something that I would say Uncle Sam has been in my life, you know, since birth. And I've also seen the trauma because my father went through a lot of um, mental things that I, as a child, you don't know, you know. But I've seen him with alcoholism and the stuff that he went through trying to find his way after military life. And so when I stand now as a woman, I want to give back and be able to be a resource for those that are going through that. And my mother was the spiritual one. So she was the faith-based person, always praying. So I said, God cares about everyone. So that's how I blend it, too, you know, when I'm in, walking in my calling, because I feel that this is a God-given call to help, you know. And my target is veterans and youth, because I feel those are the two populations that are really at risk. 
Of course. Yeah. Um, now, in in um, in that first part, mm-hmm. for certification for the faith part, yes. w- what do you have there that gives you that, that um, I would say, authority? Okay. Well, I have been in church serving for over 27 years, and also I'm an ordained licensed minister. And so that qualifies me in that area, and I'm also a New York State chaplain with the New York State Task Force. Mm-hmm. So that's my spiritual background that gives me, you know, kind of like the reason, the title. The badge part. and everything. Yeah. So boom, here yes. I am. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, me personally, I've always um, saw uh, religion as a pillar for mental health. Mm-hmm. Now, I myself am a chaplain, um, and, you know, I, I'm i not really a, a preacher, mm-hmm. more of, a, I, I like to say, like a spiritual warrior. All right. And... You know, my task is more, you know, doing helping with the resources and getting events and trying to get people into the church, mm-hmm. uh, but without pushing them. Yes. Um, and then, uh, you know, I try to do non-denominational. So, you know, one day I'm working with somebody who's uh, Muslim or mm-hmm. Christian or et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um, so I look at it at that. Mm-hmm. Now, you have a background, in, uh, you know, for your work, yes. your family, you know, what, how did you see bringing it in to meet me at the crossroads? So, like, what was the, what came first, helping as a nonprofit for veterans, youth, the religion part, or did it just mash together at the same time? Well, the religion part was always in it. And I, I, I'm going to take out religion because religion is just doing something habitual. Okay. So it's not religion. It's just faith-based, okay. you know. Um, youth came first. Because that's how I started working with the youth. I was already working in after-school programs, so I was there with them. And then veterans just, like I said, because it's in my blood, you know, I just went right into it. Because I was always at the veterans hospital with my brother. I had always um, had a good relationship and rapport with the veterans. So it just flowed. And I said, this is somewhere that I feel most comfortable would you tell us some of the qualifications that you have regarding the youth and the um because you already went through the the faith part and the veteran part now what yes. qualifications regarding the youth so right now working with the youth i have different certifications as far as um life coach and ptsd certified certified um for adolescence counseling certification and right now i'm in the process of getting my license for masters in social work oh great so I'm like a lifetime learner, you know, so I never stop doing stuff that, you know, keeps me educated on the most current, you know, and most effective techniques to help people. I love that. Yeah. Now, so what are some past um, work that you've done that has really been the highlight of your career so far? I would say um, my empowerment workshops, you know, because I'm a person that loves hands-on and really it kind of got the COVID thing really Yes. was really impactful and it stopped a lot of stuff. So now a lot of stuff is just over Zoom or something like that. But I'm hoping to get back into um, real live stuff, you know, finding a place to do my workshop. So the most impactful, I would say, would be helping people understand who they are because I think that's the main thing that is happening that I see. People don't know their identity. You know, they don't know who they are, and so they settle for whatever you know when you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made when you know that god has a purpose for your life when you know that when you have a purpose it gives you peace and joy and stability you know when you learn how to um, identify your triggers and know how to react in a different way which is part of cognitive behavioral therapy that we do and also there's something called sit stress inoculation training you know, so we put you in a situation, of course, with safety guards around, but something that would trigger you and teach you how to react in a different way so you can get better results. You know, because we trauma is everyone on earth has trauma. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. you cannot be born into this earth without being traumatized with something because it's all around us. So I just want to help people in that area, learning to deal with trauma and learning how to live joy with joy and peace. You know, veterans, um, mm-hmm. most especially, you know, yes. coming 
you know, most, uh, you know, when you leave home, mm -hmm. you're not ready. I don't think that many people are ready for that type of environment. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have the the uh, combat portion of it. Yes. Coming back home, one of the biggest things that I've seen working as an executive officer for a nonprofit for veterans mm -hmm. is readjusting. Yeah. You know, uh, and so when you said all that, the first thing that comes to mind is mm -hmm. um, having to speak to somebody. And yeah. a lot of veterans sometimes don't want to do the whole medical portion that's right you know the facilities and all that stuff mm -hmm. and they feel like um going to you know outside services nonprofits, etc yes now you have your hands in outside the va and in the va absolutely mm -hmm. that transition was it smooth do you see you know a relationship building further you know how did you get to that point um, it just happened, I would say haphazardly. Like I said, I was going there so frequently that I hooked up with, um, I'm sure you know Johnny Williams. Yes, good old yes. Johnny, yeah. <laughs> From Help is on the Way. Yeah. So he and I linked up and we started doing things together. And when they had the, um, the open fair, I would set up my table. And so that's how we got into that. And then I started getting introduced to different people, different directors in the hospital and stuff like that. But my main goal is always to do my um, separate you know, as far as meet me at the crossroads. But, of course, collaboration is, is key to any nonprofit. We all should work together and help each other. Yes, and funding for nonprofits is, is uh, it's a hard game. Yes, it is. But the work that you're outputting, I'm sure, is bringing, bringing um, funds in because yes. of the work that you're doing. Now, one of the biggest ones that I saw recently was for the youth yes. and over the summer. Would you tell the, sure. the folks about that? Sure, that was such a exciting blessing. That was the first time we were able to take inner city youth away for six days and five nights at the Poconos camp. It was awesome. I mean, we provided transportation. Of course, they had free lodging in the, in the um, cabins. They had food. Like, they were feeding them three, four times a day, <laughs> all you can eat, you know. And um, they had a curriculum for them going hiking and going zip lining and um, swimming, canoeing, it was fantastic, you know, and I am starting right now. I've been putting out a flyer for $5 a week to sponsor for next year because we want to do it again and take more kids with us, you know, so it's like $200 a kid, okay. you know, and if they start now $5 a week, I said, it. you spend more at Chick-fil-A, you know, yes, yes. so <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, we can get sponsorship for that because it was so beautiful and it was spiritually grounded also. Because um, they had something called club night there. And so at night, the kids got together and they sang worship songs and, you know, and they had a person come in and just give them like motivational spiritual talk, okay. you know, for different things that they're going through as kids. So it was pretty wonderful. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. Just in case the viewers didn't hear it earlier, how can they reach you yes. um, and donate? Okay. You can reach me at meetmeatthexroad.com. You can see all the information. You can see the pictures from the camp. And you can just easily click on the donate button and you can donate. And, and I want to make this very clear. The reason why I'm saying it twice is because not only are you pushing for the veterans, but you're also pushing for the youth. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people think just because you have the funds that it's easily split apart. Mm -hmm. You know, each each objective, each program has its own yes. you know um you know problems and mm -hmm. and resources but you know the point is the funds are needed for yeah. that and one thing i want to mention when we talk about veterans veterans have children mm -hmm. and when veterans are going through ptsd those children are affected by that you know and so it's not you can't really separate the two kids are affected by what the adults go through Mm -hmm. So when you're treating one, you're treating the line. It's trickling down. <laughs> and and what I mentioned earlier, the um, readjustment. You know, if uh, if a child was born when their you know parents were yes. in the military, you can imagine the you know being in the station, the military base, and then going That's back right. into the civilian life as well. I mean, mm -hmm. that the impact on that is yes. you know because you know the military lifestyle, the mm -hmm. um, community is. Yes. I don't want to say it's drastically different, but mm -hmm. it is. It has its own yeah. you know entity right there. So. Uh, you know, once again, thank you for what, everything that you're doing. Yes. Um, I love the camping program. Do you oh, have anything yes. coming up that you want to mention? Um, right now, no. I don't have anything per se coming up. Um, I Well, 
I'm planning a workshop. I am. And it's called Breaking the Cycle. But I'm looking for a facility so I can, like a venue, mm-hmm. so I can invite people to that. Right. So, I mean, how many people are you looking towards? Um, probably 30. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put my hand out there and say... Okay. Um, I want to help you work on that. Beautiful. Okay. If we're not, if we don't provide the venue itself, we'll mm-hmm. help you get the connection to, Thank you. to get that. I appreciate right. that. That's awesome. Now, could you tell us a little bit more about the program, though? About the the workshop, the workshop. that I'm going to come up with. Oh, that's coming up. Okay. It's basically for people that have been um, recovering. They're in recovery. In recovery. So they've gone through different situations, and now they're doing something to give back. Okay. And so they're going to be telling their testimony about how they went through this particular struggle, what was it that caused them to get out of it, and how others can follow that pattern. So that's why it's called cycle breakers, you know. Perfect. Yeah. The reason I'm so adamant to help is Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I like to do is I I reach out to people nationally, and and I speak to them regarding... Um, a hashtag we've been working on, hashtag end the stigma. Yes. And I believe one of the problems that we have with mental um, resources and, and the community itself is that the stigma is if you say it that you need help, mm-hmm. a lot of things start happening. If you do it for work, next thing you know, you're you might be labeled. Yes. Um, you know, if you're in the military and you say you have, you know, PTSD, mm-hmm. there's a point where they might have to remove you and mm-hmm. discharge you. So, do you risk that? You know, and that's right. nothing that shouldn't be, but you know, it, it's its own complications that's very there. True. Um, also, you know, the the aspect of that is. I always try to do empowerment. So oh, when I yes. say, uh, you know, I've, I think I've written maybe six in the last year articles and civilian and military. Mm-hmm. And the goal is always to say, look, you have your story. There have been bad parts, but there also have been good parts. That's now, right. fortunately, that the ones that I've been talking to are at a point where they want people to know that if there's other people suffering out there, they can make it too. That's right. So what we're seeing is right there, and I'm beautiful. I feel a connection for that. Oh, so I, yeah. like I said, so I'm, that's right with the cycle I'm, breakers. Yeah. I'm putting my yes. hand out there, and, and I'll be happy to help try to Great. get your facility. That's gonna be for awesome. That. Yes. Um, now you know. Let's change it up a little bit. Okay. Now we know each other. Yes, we do. We've been working together for quite a bit now. Mm-hmm. And we met at the VA. And we met at the yes. VA. <laughs> um, you know, I I do my best to to go as to much meetings and Mm -hmm. um different things not only the va you know government um programs the civilian um and you know i like to see all the dynamics now sometimes when i um reach out it's clicks automatically Mm -hmm. and i'm happy to say that it was one for us right there i remember i grabbed your card but i was in a rush to leave that's right and then (laughs) you know i called you i think the very next day Mm -hmm. and i'm like Da, 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 da. Yes. And next thing I know, I think we met within like a week or so. Yes, we did something together, yeah. right? Yes. And then, you know, so that, you know, uh, testimonial right here. That's testimonial right. right here. I call that divine connections. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, since then, we've been working on at least three or four projects now. Mm-hmm. Um, one for uh, domestic violence for the community. Yes. Um, working with uh, junior ROTC uh, cadets. Mm-hmm. Um, reading to children and yes. speaking to them. And one that escapes my mind right now, but I know there's another one. Out of those three that I mentioned, and the uh-huh. fourth that I'm forgetting at the moment, which one was your favorite? I have to say reading to those kids. Yes. That was a joy to see their yeah. responses. Yes. For, the, uh, for our listeners, um, our viewers, um, what we did was one of the things that I try to do is, once again, always trying to empower. Mm-hmm. The military... You know, when people talk about us in outside of, let's say, Veterans Day Mm -hmm. or Armed Forces Day, sometimes you might get a little negativity, Mm -hmm. but patriotism is always there. The problem is they try to keep it out in certain places. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this in a negative way, but, you know, children need to see, um, you know, they see cops all the time, and they look, that's where a cop is, and he's yes. here to protect us. What I want them to know is, you know, the military personnel and veterans, you know, military per, um, specifically are 
protecting you now. That's right. Nationally. Yes. You know, and veterans have given that blank check to um, to watch over you, to protect yes. you, etc. So that specific event, I wanted them to see a Marine, not just mm-hmm. a Marine. I did invite others, but yes. um, there was mostly veterans that came yes. out, you know, Navy mm-hmm. veterans, Army veterans. But um, we had active duty Marines from the South Bronx mm-hmm. come. And not only did they speak to the the children, but they also showed them the Marine Corps vehicle yes, and gave nice. them a story of mm-hmm. all the the um the symbolisms of everything like yes. the EG, um, eagle golden anchor and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then us going to go speak you know in your capacity of what yes. you know growing up in the military family mm-hmm. and everything like that it was such a beautiful moment it was and uh the principal came after we said look they're gonna remember this for the rest of their life yes. and right there boom that was worth yeah. it i know i saw the little kid he didn't take off that marine hat the whole time <laughs> he had it on and now I remember the other event. You came to the after-school program, remember? There we go, yes. Yes, <laughs> with the Brigadier Commander. Yes. yes. So that was awesome to speak to the after-school program. Thank you for mm-hmm. reminding me. <laughs> so letting them, letting them know the careers that are available to them within the you know, military. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, one of, the, one of the, the things that, you know, uh, uh, General Rhonda um, from the SAR of CEC Cadet Corps, mm-hmm. um, you know, I love having him talk. He's like a cyclopedia of not only military knowledge, mm-hmm. but also the Cadet Corps and, you know, trying to bring, um, let's say, physical activities, knowledge and, mm-hmm. and stuff regarding the military, not only the military, but just stability and stuff yes. like that. It is, it's beautiful. And, and, you know, I think we did preschool yes. and then the the, when we went to your event, it was middle school. That's right. And now my goal has been to do high school and colleges. Yes. College is easy, but high mm-hmm. school, I would like to, to do more events at high school. But that's right there is yeah. is um, it's a hard venue to break yes, through. Yes, it is. Um, because, once again, the negativity of kids joining the military. Mm-hmm. Once again, they want the military to... To recruit them because yes. they, they recruit to the high school kids, yes. but there's always that little stigma. So, mm-hmm. I, I hope in the months and years to come, I can try to break through yes. those barriers. Yes. Now, um, is there anything that you like to bring up that we haven't mentioned? Um, well, I could just talk more about my two books that I wrote. Yes, please. Because with youth now, I see them going through a lot of different negative relationships, toxic relationships. So one of my books is called um, Meeting Mr. Right After Several Mr. Wrongs. Okay. So each chapter talks about a guy that, I, for starting from my first love up until my husband, and tells you about what things I went through. And then I bring scripture in to say what God says you shouldn't settle for and what you deserve as a child of God. So that's a very awesome book not just for girls but for guys too because they need to understand what we go through mm-hmm. you know the the different dynamics of relationships and the second one is when your greatest weakness becomes your greatest strength in the kingdom and that book is all about fear fear is something that stagnates and causes us to not move out into things that we should and so that teaches you like how to overcome that and when you step out and trust God You'll be amazed at what you can do, you know. You know, when you're walking out and you're calling, when you came out of the military, I know you didn't see yourself, like, now. No, I didn't. You not. know, you had to step out in faith and, you know, and just know that you're going to do this. So that's what the book talks about, you know, just following what your dreams are. Now, if somebody wanted to purchase one, how would they go about doing that? The books are on Amazon, but everything is through my website. So when they go to the website, we have a store page. And so they'll just click on where... For the for, book. Meet me at the X? Meet me at the com. And then there's a section for the book? There's a section for the book and for the clothing because we have sw- we have hoodies, T-shirts, dresses, hats, and all of those proceeds go to helping us fund different, or, you know, um, events that we want to have. That's beautiful. hmm Anything else? No. No, that's it? <laughs> well, I would like to mention regarding the cadets. Yes. Um, you know, when we were... When we were speaking to them, you know, I, in my mind, I didn't r- really connect with um, how hard the transition for them from the COVID, the pandemic mm. regulations oh, yes. to coming back and everything. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can think 
but I really can't feel what they went through. Because, mm-hmm. you know, for me, going to high school, it, it was, you know, show, told me all my social um, right. socialization and stuff like that. For them to miss a large portion mm-hmm. of that and then come back to the real world. You, I, I remember you had one of the, one of, I, I don't want to call it a game, but mm-hmm. one of the uh, lessons yes. um, was taking a, a ball and throwing it yes. at you. And there was, um, you know, different parts to, to talk about. Yes. For you and 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 the pro and that program, what's the process so that people can try to think and see differently? Because that was something I've never seen before. Okay, well, what he's talking about is in my workshops, I use auditory, visual, and kinetic activities because everybody has three ways of learning. So I make sure I hit each area. So I never want, especially with children, to just talk at them because they you lose them. And so what I had, I had a, a Velcro target that they put around their neck, and that represented their heart, you know, and their feelings and their emotions. And so the darts or the balls that they were throwing, it would hit areas where people could say certain things to them that could damage them, and not knowing how important it is to speak life into our youth and young people. And so that was the demonstration that when you hit the target, say if you hit 100 right in the center, that's something that really penetrated their heart and could last and cause them not to step out. Sometimes you hit something, you hit a 10 on the end. Somebody said something that didn't affect you that much, you know. So we just went through that visualization and that activity to show them that words do matter and they hurt. Mm. (laughs) Which, you know... If, once again, that socialization part, yes. if they weren't interacting as much, it might be lost in, in the sauce for That's that. right. Yes. Um, now, in is there any upcoming um, resource fairs that you might know of that maybe the the, list, the viewers might want to know about? Oh, yes. Um, I got to get the exact date, but I think it's September 9th. We're going to be, not just me, but my table and um, different people are going to be at Poe Park on 192nd and the Grand Concourse, and we're having a big event there. And we're going to be giving out clothes, and we have food, and we're going to have, um, you know, a person ministering. And so it's like a big family event. Anybody can come out. And for something like that, I'm assuming uh, not only uh, donation by funds, but donations of um you know, tangible items could be yes, used? Yes, absolutely. So we had um, people donating clothes, you know, for adults, for children, shoes, sneakers. So, yeah. Any, like, um, kitchenware or anything like that that could be used? Or um, We didn't actually give out that, but why not? You know, mm-hmm. we can expand to that because some people may be in need of that. Right. So I wouldn't limit it, you know. I would just say, okay, yeah, that could be accepted too. Well, I'll try to see if I can stop by. If I can't stop by that day, yes. I'll do it before. Um, because, you know, Devil Dog, we always have... Um, people dropping off things. Um, yes. Even though I say we're only looking for coats, books, mm-hmm. and, and whatnot, they'll come up with, you know, baby cribs out of nowhere. And yes. I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate your yeah. donation here. So I know last year they were also giving out, like, you know, boxes of sweet potatoes and, you know, mm. mangoes and, you know, so stuff <laughs> that they can take hold too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, um, to our viewers out there, I want to say um, one more time, uh, Diana, if you can please tell them how they can reach you yes. and your organization. Okay. My organization is Meet Me at the Crossroads. We are a faith-based, evidence-based, trauma-informed counseling organization. We work with veterans and youth, and you can reach us at meetmeatthexroad.com. So once again, this is Vet Talk, and I'm your host, Sergeant Gonzalo Duran. Before I sign off, I'd like to say that the PACT Act has just finished uh, registration, but if you have been impacted by the burn pits or any other exposures and you have medical documents, I always recommend submitting them to the VA. Um, This shirt right here was, uh, I worked on it with a a mission organization formerly called uh, Mission or Fashion Has Heart. Now it's called Has Hearts. This represents over 10 years of advocacy regarding the burn pits. Um, It's been my mission to try to bring in, now that the PACT Act has been um, enacted, um, the battle is still going on. So, as always, God bless America.